Welcome to Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems Implementing Health Interoperability, Lecture F. This unit will cover the following learning objectives. 1. Identify major tasks required to implement interoperability. 2. Explain why interoperability implementation projects are needed. 3. Define and discuss each phase of the interoperability implementation lifecycle. Objective 4. Describe how to apply each phase of the healthcare interoperability implementation lifecycle to simple interoperability implementation problems. And 5. List types of production issues with interoperability and identify and describe support strategies. This lecture describes how to support an interoperability implementation in production. It describes common types of production issues and discusses support strategies. Once a project is live, the interoperability implementation now needs to be supported in the production environment. This could be considered the longest phase of a project. The challenge of interoperability is that the data needs to consistently keep flowing. Interoperability is critical to support many clinical and operational processes. For many interoperability scenarios, loss of service is not obvious. This is because the data is flowing automatically. The user expects doctor orders to be delivered in a timely manner and clinical results to be delivered in a timely manner. And if an order or result is not present, the user is not aware that one exists to be processed. For example, the lab has no way of knowing that an order should have already been received from the doctor and, as a consequence, a critical lab test might not be done in time. The doctor has no way of knowing that a critical imaging result was not received and could make an incomplete diagnosis. The dietary system has no way of knowing that a patient has an allergy if the allergy information is not flowing and could allow a meal choice that could harm a patient. It is important to have robust monitoring capabilities and support systems to quickly detect outages, inform users, and restore service. There are three main types of problems that occur. The first is that data is not flowing or is not available on a query. The second is that there is a delay in data flow. The third is errors in the data. Here are some examples of possible production issues. The EHR lab results interface is rejecting incoming lab results. The e-prescribing interface on clinical EHR is not sending out prescriptions. The patient administration interface is behind by 45 minutes. Documents sent to the patient portal are missing imaging results, and patients are unable to access their medication lists from their smartphones. The ITIL framework provides terminology and guidance on IT support practices in general. It defines a production issue as an incident and that the immediate goal is to resolve the incident by restoring service. This is referred to as incident management. It distinguishes incidents from problems. Problems are the underlying root causes of incidents. Fixing problems is often harder and more time-consuming and may actually require project work to complete. Therefore, the immediate goal in production support is to resolve incidents. In this lecture, we will discuss how to manage interoperability incidents and problems. Once your interoperability implement is stable in production, it is important that you have a systematic way to monitor it and address problems. Also, when a problem is detected, it is important that there are people assigned to address the problem. These people should not necessarily be the same people who implemented the interoperability. There are several ways to handle support. Routine support might be handled by service test type personnel. Support could be in one group and development of new projects could be in another group. Support could also be rotated. It is important that there is not just one person who knows how to support something. And on-call support is usually necessary due to the 24-7 nature of healthcare. To help operationalize support, clearly document support procedures and keep them up to date. Also, 
While the most important thing is to notify users and immediately restore operations when there is an issue, diagnosing and fixing root causes of production problems will reduce incident occurrence, make support more manageable, and make things better for the user in the long term. Providing continual production support is challenging, especially if it's needed 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Ideally, you have a 24-7 service desk as first line of support that can field initial calls and can handle simple problems. Other than that, on-call staff needs to be available. It is important that multiple people can have the same on-call roles and that on-call support rotates with some overlap built in. There should also be higher levels of on-call support at the management and executive level. Also, if employees are cross-trained, they can support more areas. It is important to have the on-call schedules and contact information for all aspects of an interoperability implementation. If serious problems arise and the on-call needs help, off-call personnel are encouraged to step in. Since interoperability problems are not rapidly detected by users, it is especially important to be vigilant with monitoring. Periodically check the health of the environment by checking monitors, logs, emails, user forums, and with users. Set up automatic alarms to notify the on-call quickly and sometimes management when the problem continues for a longer time. Alarming could be in the form of an email for lower priority problems or in the form of an audible alert from a smartphone for higher priority problems. Ideally, the interoperability support capabilities of your middleware can be configured and tuned to automatically change who gets alerted when, based on an on-call schedule, and allows you to easily tune alerting so that support personnel are notified of critical issues as a priority. For example, systems that are not used on the weekend should not fire audible alarms. As much as possible, automate support processes so that support personnel can focus on the tasks truly requiring human intervention. For example, have automatic restart functionality built. You will want to be extra vigilant when the risk of failure is higher or when the impact of failure is higher. High priority interfaces, times of heavy system utilization, new changes to production, when you know a system is prone to failure or when you have recently recovered from a significant loss of service are examples of high priority production issues. The following strategies are useful for diagnosing what is wrong. Check if the issue has occurred before and how it was fixed. Look to see if there are recent changes to production that may have caused the issue. Check journals, logs, alert email history, and monitors for information that might help diagnose the issue. Turn on a debug feature that allows you to see a detailed log of all interface activity. Run messages and documents through validator tools. Check to see if there are any other problems occurring. Perhaps there is another problem which is related. Is there a scheduled outage or event that might be causing the issue? Interoperability problems are hard to solve since they involve multiple systems. This means they also tend to take longer to solve because multiple parties could be involved. Solving issues quickly and effectively requires teamwork. Ask the user and retrace their steps. Ask the person on call or review the turnover log. Seek help from other technicians, especially on the connected systems. Ask the service desk. And most importantly, do not delay in escalation. If you cannot recover service rapidly, you need to escalate. Sometimes people worry about inconveniencing others when a problem occurs on weekends or at night. But when clinical systems and patients depend on interoperability working, the inconvenience is well worth it. Once you discover an issue, you will want to effectively communicate about the issue and recover service. However, to do either effectively, you need to understand the impact. What is affected by the issue? For example, if the lab results interface is down, then all systems receiving lab results will not get the results until service has been recovered. You need to determine which data flows are affected 
and how they are affected, what workaround is appropriate, and who needs to know about the outage. Here are some strategies for resolving common interface problems. If the interface is down, delayed, or very slow, the best idea is to restart it. If you are able to restart both sides of the interface, then shut down both sides completely and restart the receiver first, followed by the sender. Restarting an interface is a quick and simple method to recover service for many issues. It should usually be considered as a first response to a problem. Sometimes you can automate restarts. That means the system detects a failure and restarts itself. If none of the above work, you might be able to route the data flow via another path. If a message is rejected, figure out why it was rejected. Fix the data on the source and force a resend. You might also be able to skip the offending message and let the users know what was skipped so they can manually enter or fix and push it through. If data is lost, you can try to regenerate the data. One way is to resend messages from saved journal files. In the worst case, manual data entry might need to be done. When debugging problems and recovering service, the following resources can be especially useful. Journals of all messages sent or received is useful. You can analyze them, looking for anomalies. You can replay them in a test when testing a fix. Log showing interface status, warnings, errors, and timings are helpful. Perhaps the interface is being automatically restarted over and over or there is a slowness recorded at a particular time of day. Alerts are useful not only when they occur, they are also useful to analyze over time. Perhaps a particular interface always generates alerts on Saturdays. You can then determine why, or perhaps be able to ignore the alert. If an issue happened last week, look up last week's incident report to understand how it was resolved. Change control reports are also useful. Many times a production issue can be traced back to a recent change. Recall that the immediate goal when there is an issue is to recover service as quickly as possible, not necessarily to resolve root cause. This is called fixing the incident. For example, if auto send of a care summary fails, manually send it. Diagnose later why it failed without impacting production. Another example is to restart the medication query server so a patient's med query app works, even though it periodically keeps failing. Investigate later after recovery by reading error logs. Remove or repair bad data in a patient admissions message before trying to resolve why it is bad. Remember that interoperability occurs behind the scenes. Many times, users are not aware that there is a problem. Communication is critical so that they understand what is not working and how to work around it and when they can expect service to be restored. Also, communicate widely, not just to those you think need to know. You could be missing someone and there could be impact you are not aware of. Communicate to end users, the management, and to IT. The users need to know there is a problem quickly, so as soon as it's detected and a communication can be drafted, it needs to be sent. Use multiple mediums, emails, phone alerts, banners on screens, phone calls to key people, priority one conference calls, etc. Also, just because you sent a message doesn't mean it was heard. For critical communications, make sure the recipient acknowledges the message. The problem refers to the root cause that is causing incidents of failure. You fix problems to reduce incident occurrence. The goal is to either find a permanent fix or a viable workaround. To fix problems, analyze production logs, reproduce the issue in a test environment, resolve, and then schedule a go-live of the fix. It is important to guard production. All changes to production must be analyzed to determine if they will impact interoperability. Thorough testing should be done prior to going live with any upgrade. Upgrades of components involved in interoperability could impact its availability or functionality. 
Also, you might determine that a particular interface needs to be changed, either to resolve an identified production problem or to enhance its functionality. Again, this should be done following the interoperability implementation life cycles and using formal change management processes. This concludes Lecture F of Implementing Health Interoperability. To summarize, production support is important for interoperability projects because data needs to be constantly flowing. The goal of production support is to resolve incidents, not necessarily to fix problems, which are the root causes of incidents. Because of the healthcare work environment, the need for data flow, and the impact of production issues, support is key and requires teamwork and communication.